Hi and welcome to Poly Originals. My name is Fiona Abel Smith and I thought I'd do a quick video today on how to condition polymer clay. A lot of people when they first start aren't really sure how or why you need to condition polymer clay so I thought I'd just take you through the basics. I think hopefully I might have a few tips and techniques that might speed up your conditioning for you. I mainly learnt how to condition clay quickly um, doing exhibitions up at the National Exhibition Centre for the British Polymer Clay Guild and when you're doing the exhibitions you have a very short period of time in which to capture people's attention and to get them to stand and watch what you're doing and I found sitting there conditioning clay wasn't particularly helpful so I taught myself very quickly how to ha take a few shortcuts um, while still maintaining the integrity and the strength of the polymer clay and that's what I'm hoping to show you today. This works with all the different makes of clay so I've got various ones here Primo, Cato, Cernit, Pardo, Fimo. There's loads of other different brands it all say it works exactly the same with all of them. As far as I can tell I think I differ from how other people do it in three main ways. Firstly the um, size of the slices I cut in my polymer clay. Secondly, the width of the pasta machine that I use to condition my clay. And thirdly, how I fold the clay when it goes through the pasta machine. So those are the three main things I'm going to show you today. And at the end of the video, I will also show you quickly how to condition clay for those of you who don't have a pasta machine. Although if you don't have one and you've watched this video, I think you'll see that very quickly you need to beg, borrow, preferably not steal, or buy a pasta machine so it can help you in this process. I also, like a lot of people, have arthritis in my hands, so that's another reason why using a pasta machine and using these quick techniques gets me through conditioning clay nice and quickly. So I'm going to use the Fimo Soft. Um, it's one of the ones I use, it's actually FX, um, but I use Fimo Soft and Fimo Professional in a lot of what I do, but equally I use the other clays depending on what I want to do. So each clay is slightly different and has um, different properties. Personally, I tend to only condition half... Um, a block of polymer clay at a time. So why do we condition polymer clay? Well the main reason being is that polymer clay is made up of several different elements and even though you might have a brand new pack of polymer clay it's sat for a little while, it's, since it's left the factory even if it's in transit you may have got cold um, or all the different ingredients will have become dispersed and moved around, it may have sat on the shop shelf for a while before you got it who, who knows or it's sat on your shelf but it's the plasticizer in particular that's within the clay that you want to make sure goes to all the different parts of your block of clay and that way you can make sure that you're going to get a very nice conditioned piece of clay now I've always watched um, people doing polymer clay and they've always cut it in thick slices and put it through on a thick setting on the pasta machine. And I always thought if you're trying to get all the ingredients pushed together as quickly as possible, surely it would be better to smash those pieces together and let the pasta machine do the job for you. So that is why I often use a much thinner setting when I'm conditioning my clay. There are various other ways of conditioning clay. There's machines on the market, for instance, that actually bash down and you turn and bash and turn and bash and they're really good. Um, I've also seen people take into it with hammers and bashing it and again that's a very good technique but if you've got a pasta machine and if you've got a tissue blade then this technique works just as well a lot less hard on your hands and everything else and also is really really quick so all I do using my tissue blade towards the middle and this is a good way for me of getting very used to cutting thin slices of clay I just simply take let me move that so you can see it several thin slices of polymer clay and I can tell when I'm cutting through how conditioned the clay is. So I can tell because this isn't falling apart, I know immediately that it's actually quite a well, a nicely um, soft block of clay that's not going to take too much conditioning. If that was crumbly and it had all fallen apart and I've got a piece here, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which is just like that, um, it would have taken a lot more conditioning. But I know from this that setting number three on my pasta machine is going to be good enough. So that's my second tip. Always start at a medium setting on your pasta machine. So I'm just going to put these pieces up towards the pasta machine and then I'm just going to adjust the camera angle slightly so you can see what I'm doing with the pasta machine. Okay so we're across at our pasta machine and all I've done as you can see is just put these pieces roughly in the top of the pasta machine and all I do now is turn the handle. Any bits that aren't any pieces that aren't going through just gently put them through and then see how it collects at the bottom. Take your pieces and put them together in one block 
and try to make sure you don't have any folds towards the top. Folds at the bottom are fine, folds at the sides are fine. You don't want any folds at the top because then if you put it through the pasta machine any air that gets trapped in the layers will actually create pockets of air in the top and you certainly don't want that when it goes in the oven. So I'm just going to put it through again but this time I'm going to collect it in my hand when it comes through. And what I'm now going to start doing is folding. Now whereas most um, conditioning clay tutorials you'll see will say fold from the bottom and put through, I always fold sides to middle, sides to middle. And by doing that you are constantly folding the ragged edges in towards the middle, so getting these bits conditioned as well. Then put it through, making sure that the folds are at the sides. Pick it out and repeat. And by doing this you are turning the clay 90 degrees each time you put it through. Um, you, as I say, are putting all the raggedy bits in towards the edge and you'll find that your pasta, uh, your polymer plate, gets conditioned nice and quickly. You'll also notice that I've got used to doing the fold as I go through, so I've already part folded it, so it's a very quick process when you do that. And you'll see that the polymer clay is getting conditioned very, very quickly. And I can feel in my hand how nice and soft that's now gone. It's got a slightly sort of um, leathery type texture, it, it sort of moves nicely. And when you put it together in a fold and press down the fold, there's no cracking. All the cracking along the top has gone as well, so that is now a perfectly conditioned piece of polymer clay and ready to use. Okay, so that's how to do polymer clay when it comes nicely um, conditioned or nice and soft in the packet. What we're going to do now is to try a piece of exceedingly crumbly clay. Okay, I have here an old block of Fimo Classic. Now this is very old. This was donated to me by a friend who knows that I quite like to condition clay and that, as far as I'm concerned, there is no clay too crumbly, so she thought this might be a bit of a challenge. So I had a bit of a practice first and I did manage to get some done, not too badly, um, but this is a really good block to use to show you how I would condition exceedingly crumbly clay. Now there are products on the market such as um, Mix Quick being one, and um, there's loads of other um, products you can use for conditioning old clay. But this is literally, you can tell how hard that is, straight from the packet, really cold. Now normally if I was planning to condition this myself, particularly if I know I've got a really old block of clay, I will chop myself off a piece, probably about that sort of size, wrap it in um, a plastic bag or a piece of um, easy leaf sheet that I know isn't going to react with the polymer clay and pop it in my pocket for about 20 minutes. It's amazing how gentle body heat will really help to warm the clay up to a point at which it becomes easier to use. However, we're not going to do that today. I'm going to show you how this works right from the very crumbly form. So I'm just going to take a chunk of this. Now I'm not going to work on too much because that's my other tip. When your clay is really old and crumbly, don't take too much at a time. So I'm going to split a piece off there and we're just going to work on this particular piece. Now exactly the same technique as I used beforehand, so we're going to cut really thin slices and this time you'll see the difference. And you'll see, see how that pops away. It doesn't stick close to it on its next piece as the other one did. It's scooting across the, the um, tile and I can tell you as I'm cutting through I can feel just how old and crumbly this is. You can see the little bits coming off where it is crumbly. Right, let me just speed up slightly. Stop talking. Yep, so crumbly it spins off the table. But because I've got my fingers close together on that tissue blade, I can still take these tiny, tiny slices. Okay, so we can see there, nice crumbly clay. So I'm just going to change the position um, of the camera onto the pasta machine again, so you can see how I will actually condition this clay. Right, so exactly the same as before, I've got setting number three on my pasta machine. And I'm going to put, actually, I'm only going to put three, and I'll show you the difference. Let's just put, I've just got five pieces there. Now, they, they are actually probably a little bit thinner than setting three, because I've cut them so fine. But can you see there just how crumbly they've gone through the pasta machine? Um, and if I put it on a thicker setting, it would have come through even more crumbly. And no matter how many times I put it through on that setting, it will still remain crumbly. However, because this is particularly crumbly, I'm going to push my my pasta machine right down to its thinnest setting, so number nine on mine. And then I'm going to start putting these pieces through on setting number nine. And what you should see, apart from all the crumbles, is that one or two pieces 
will come through with slightly longer length and those are the pieces I'm looking for. But you really can see how crumbly this is. Let's get the rest of those pieces off my towel and put those in as well. However, even though it's really crumbly, I have some curls here, which I would not have got if I'd have carried on putting it through at a thicker setting. So take these curls and put those through. Pack together a few more curls. Now I'm, I'm making sure as I'm doing this that I'm not putting any folds through at the top. But as you can see, only four um, turns of the pasta machine through and I'm starting to get a collection together by using that really thin setting. So you can then start collecting more clay in. I'm going to do the same again, collect it on my hand, fold it either side and push it through. And you can see, even how crumbly that clay was, it's starting to work. So now I'm going to start collecting all the, or some of the crumbs. Don't collect too many, just enough that your, um, the piece of polymer clay you've worked on can hold them. Because what you'll find is the piece you've worked on will be coming nice and soft. And you need to use that to pick up all the other bits of clay that you've got. So exactly the same as I did before. I'm just collecting it in my hands and folding it corners to the middle. And then we'll pick up these pieces around the back. And the great thing about polymer clay, of course, is it does stick to itself. So it's relatively easy to pick these pieces up. And because the clay you're putting them into is soft, they should sit in the surface until they start to be conditioned themselves. So I've still got some bits here. Very crumbly, powdery bits. But it is amazing how it comes back. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have had clay just as crumbly as this and thought, nope, that's no good, and have chucked it away. You don't need to. So just, just use these techniques and it will come back. One word of caution I would have for doing this, if you know you've got particularly crumbly clay, only start conditioning it and use it when you're about to use it in your project. Having got this back to a workable format, it will then revert to being crumbly pretty quickly, much more so than your other clays. So only use it, only do this when you're about to use it. Well, I think we're more or less done. We've picked up most of the pieces here. Let me just grab those bits from under there. And then we can start putting it up higher settings. So I'm now going to setting number seven on my machine. I know I've picked up a bit of dirtiness in there, but in the big scheme of things, we're not going to worry about that. In fact, I want to fold it there so I can't even see it. And I'm going to go up to setting number five. And that really is now getting quite nice and soft and workable. And then setting number three, so it's the same setting as the other. And let's do the fold test. No cracking. That is a perfectly conditioned piece of polymer clay, which took just minutes from absolutely crumbly polymer clay. So that is how to condition really old and crumbly polymer clay. And then finally, for those of you who don't have um, a pasta machine, I'm just going to take a piece of Primo here, open up the packet. I always tend to open the packets with um, a craft knife rather than a blade. Um, it's just easier and then it doesn't dull the um, tips of my blade. And for this one, again, just start rolling it. So I'm going to roll it in my hands to start with, just to take off the edges and let the, the warmth of your hand start to condition the clay so you've got a ball. And then I'll just roll it, make sure you've got a mess on your table. So I'm just going to roll it, fold again, ends towards the middle and roll, fold the ends towards the middle, ends to the middle, and just keep rolling it in your hands, pick it up, give it a good roll. You're, you're creating heat, but you're also trying to get all that plasticizer mixed in um, with the other pieces. And the tip for doing, um, I'm also just pulling it into pieces here and just pushing it with my hands. Imagine if you had, um, as if this was two colours and you're pushing the two colours together so that they mixed in to create a whole new colour. That's how off, how much you need to mix the clay together. And as you can see, this is why I use the pasta machine because having arthritis, this is much harder on my hands than using a pasta machine. But I'd have to say I can feel how nice and soft and warm and squidgy, for want of a better term, that is. And I can tell you that that is now perfectly conditioned piece of polymer clay. So that's how to condition your clay if you don't have a pasta machine.
I hope those tips and techniques have been useful. As I say, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. This is just the way I do it. And I've done it purely because of um, the experience I've had at the National Exhibition Centre where I have to condition clay in a really quick and efficient manner. I've never had any problems with doing it this way or the condition of my clay. The important things are um, the length of time that you bake your clay for and the temperature that you bake your clay for. As long as you do those and condition your clay thoroughly, you should have no problems at all working with polymer clay. Thank you for watching and come back and see another video of mine at a later stage. Bye.